Okay, in our next example on sound waves and the Doppler shift, we're going to have the observer walk towards the source. The source is going to be stationary. I took the wheels away so it can't move. And it's putting out a sound at a frequency of 500 hertz. What frequency will the observer observe? Now notice, if you looked at the previous video, that in the previous video, the source was moving at 10 meters per second and the observer was standing still. So does it make any difference? Well, let's find out. Um, first of all, we're going to use the very same equation no matter what the situation is. The equation is that the frequency observed is equal to the frequency of the source times the ratio of the velocity of sun and air plus or minus the velocity of the observer divided by the velocity of sun and air plus or minus the velocity of the source. We always use the same equation. Now in this case, the source is not moving, so we can go ahead and call that zero. Let's plug in all the numbers that we have. So this is equal to 500 hertz times the velocity of sound. I didn't give that to you, but let's, give it, uh, let's make it 340 meters per second. That's typical velocity around room temperature. So we have 340 plus or minus. I'll just leave that right, right now like that. 340 plus or minus the velocity of the observer. Regardless which direction he's walking, just put the number down. 10 divided by 340 and that's zero. Okay, now the big question is, is this going to be a plus or is this going to be a minus? Well, it depends upon what you're expecting to hear. If the observer is moving towards the source, that means that the waves will get to him faster than they would if he was just standing there. So it will have the effect as if the waves are closer together. Closer together means smaller no, higher frequencies, right? They'll come to them quicker. Let's, let's figure this out here. We have velocity is equal to frequency times wavelength. So the frequency is equal to the velocity divided by the wavelength. So here, if the wavelengths get smaller, or they appear to get smaller because it's moving towards the waves, that causes the frequency to increase, higher frequency. So the result is that this observer will hear a higher frequency. So we want this number to be bigger. Since this is, this is in the numerator, how do you get a bigger number? By making the numerator larger. So we need a plus. And that will give us the correct frequency. So let's find out. This is 500 hertz times 350 divided by 340, which is equal to, and just so we can compare, the previous problem had a frequency observed equal to 515.15 hertz. I'll just add a couple more decimal places so we can compare. What do we get over here? So this would be 350 divided by 340 times 500 equals, and here we get 514.7 hertz. So it's almost the same effect, but not quite. If the source is moving towards the observer, at 10 meters per second, the frequency observed by observer would be 515.15 hertz. But when the observer is moving towards the source at the very same speed, the frequency observed is equal to 514.7 hertz. A little bit different. And that's because, of course, the way the equation works. But it's correct. In both cases, that's correct if the source is moving toward the observer, and this is correct when the observer is moving towards the source. In both cases, you hear a much higher frequency, although slightly different depending on who's doing the moving. And that's how you do that problem.